Welcome back. Uh, set for our first major conversation, I guess, is already on standby. But let's quickly inform you that there are indications uh, that the banking sector uh, is shunning fresh investments in fossil fuel development, forcing all majors to seek funding from alternative markets. According to reports, more banks pledged in 2022 uh, to stop funding some or all types of new fossil fuel development as lenders are under increasing pressure from shareholders and society to cut back on emissions profiles of their client portfolios. Now, according to the leadership a Nigerian newspaper, the oil and gas industry uh, was flush with cash last year as prices soared, uh, but the sector stuck to capital discipline and especially in the United States of America, focused on remunerating shareholders and paying down debts instead of taking on more loans. Now, information from data compiled by Bloomberg uh, indicates that clean energy projects and ventures uh, saw around $518 billion in money raised on the debt markets last year. It, now, it's a situation one that will have an immediate play out in Nigeria's all important oil and gas sector. Don't forget Nigeria acquires over 90% of export earnings and roughly about 70% of government earnings from oil sales. Now what sources of alternative funding are we talking about? What sources of alter alternative funding are available to the oil and gas industry? We have joining us to discuss this Bolaho Olojere. He is an oil and gas Analyst, uh, good morning to you, Bola Olegele. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, good morning. Nice to be on the program. Yeah. Now, when we see reports like this, they usually have a global outlook. Can we um, juxtapose this and also, um, uh, you know, can we can we place this in a Nigerian context? Is this a reality as far as the oil and gas industry in Nigeria is concerned? Uh, certainly, um, there there has been a very strong movement. Well, for some decades now, actually, uh, to migrate away from fossil fuel. I it was this morning, I was just thinking about uh, my, my project in, in business school. And I was, that was 20 years ago, and it was still around fossil fuel issue. So it's, it's, it's been on the table for a while, but it is gathering more momentum. And as of today, there are various sort of deadlines um, across several countries in the world about when to migrate away or how to migrate away from uh, fossil fuel. So when you create this kind of uncertainties in the market, number one, um, providers of funds in the financial system are going to be worried about the fact that well, if the future of oil and gas is so uncertain, should I still be investing there? Um, the second point is the fact that the people that are behind this movement, uh, this is a very huge, huge movement with powerful people and organizations behind them. They are also capable of mounting pressures on the financial system to say, look, I don't want you lending to this segment. Uh, and, and that is part of what is playing out. So we see banks that are saying, no, I'm going to cut down on how much I give to that. Uh, so some are not even willing to finance fresh investment in that space at all. For us in Nigeria, that has huge implications, just as it has across the board. Let me say, however, that it is possible if you can show a proof that you have the cash flow, um, if the financial system will not offer you financing, you cannot always go to the alternative market. That one will always be there. For as long as you have a history of cash flow, or you can show that in the future, you'll be able to produce cash flow, then you can go to the alternative market. Money will be there. However, for us as Nigerians, um, we, we have to be concerned. Uh, a lot of major projects involve uh, funding from this huge bank. And the, the capacity of the Nigerian banks to be able to fund significant investment in this space um, may be a little limited, especially with the fact that the uncertainties in that market also affects Nigeria. So as, as a country, as a lender in Nigeria, you're worried about investing in this space, thinking, oh, what if I invest in this crude oil and uh, uh, we're not able to, the, the company is not able to sell this crude oil because of the possible rejection um, that is being proposed across the world. However, alternative funding should also be available to uh, uh, the Nigerian market as well. 
Beyond that, Nigeria must be asking that critical question, what is life after fossil fuel going to be? And how do we begin to prepare for that life after fossil fuel? Um, so when you, when you speak of uh, the alternative market, um, what sources are you referring to? Okay. Um, apart from bank loan, uh, alternative market has to do with things like peer-to-peer um, -peer funding. So there's somebody who has excess money, is not, it's not using it, or he's looking for where to plug it. Here is another person who needs money. Without going through the banking system, that these two people can be connected, or these two categories of people, Investors directly with the people that need the fund. That is an alternative fund without involving the bank. You can also have things like um, uh, vendor financing, factoring, in which a vendor financing is look, if I borrow money from the bank, what I'm going to use the money for is probably maybe to buy equipment. So why why not talk to the equipment provider directly instead of going through a bank? So the equipment provider looks at your cash flow, he sees that you are able to generate cash flow and repay him for the equipment. Then you can do a deal directly with that vendor without going through the, the, the financial system. So that is that is vendor finance. You can also structure all form of a step back uh, securitization. The bottom line is that you are able to show that what you are what you are putting this money to is capable of generating cash flow. Once the investor is convinced of your cash flow generating capacity. A, a funding structure can always be put together. That is essentially what the alternative finance uh, is all about. And we can we can also uh, do that in Nigeria. Even if a Nigerian oil company is importing equipment from outside the country, can have a direct relationship with that uh, uh, that vendor and, and and have the financing arranged. That's what we're saying. However, let me say that the fact that we are cutting the bank, the banks have been the biggest financier of this industry. And it will not be the same if those if that segment is not providing form uh, uh, for the industry. Hmm. Uh, an analysis of, of, of results of Nigeria's um, you know publicly leading oil and gas companies revealed the end a whopping sum of uh, one point zero three one trillion naira, one point zero three one trillion naira as uh, revenue in the nine months that ended September two thousand and twenty two, um, and this this you know basically just outstripped, outpaced uh, their corresponding earnings for the same period in 2021. I mean, we look at 776.9 billion naira for a corresponding period in two, 2021. That's, that's, that's a, 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 huge, a huge jump to 1.031 trillion. Um, this seems attractive, especially with the climate, economic, uh, uh, political climate in the world today. The Russian war in, on Ukraine, which has driven up oil and gas prices, um, isn't the industry so attractive, such that it is so juicy that the lenders will not be able to stay back? Well, or, or, or is, 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 is it not? Is, is the um, the clamor and the the drive for a cleaner energy stronger than the financial attractiveness of the oil and gas industry? Let's look at Nigeria and then the global context. That, that is the reality. Um, the, the pressure on those huge banks is, is, is uh, such that they might not have an option that to call down. If the owners of the bank, if the shareholders are saying, don't put my money in that industry, you don't have an option. Like you are a high alley, and you could be asked to go if you will not obey the rules laid down by the, by the shareholders. So, and the pressure, the people, the movement, is, is extremely strong. If you take America, for example, America now is under the Democratic Party. And Democratic Party are strongly pro uh, uh, this particular movement that we are talking about. So you are not only facing pressure from your shareholders, you are going to be facing some subtle pressure from the government as well. So if things change a little bit, maybe if you have a Republican government, in, in, in power in America, mm. the pressure point might be might be lower than what we currently have. But mm. as it is today, look at banks. If you put the banks like Wells Fargo, Citibank, and uh, Bank of America, you, know, you put them together and you see how much they put in this industry. It is huge. It is in trillions of dollars. That's what these guys combined together put in the industry. Mm. So 
if they are pulling back, uh, it's, 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 it's a huge uh, impact on that industry. However, it's also an opportunity for the alternative market. Let's see what uh, investment bankers and the rest of them can put together to ensure that financing will continue to this particular industry. So you're looking at investment bankers, you're looking at uh, venture capitalists, maybe. I don't know if hedge, Correct. hedge funds are part of that. But but let's look at Nigeria. What does... I, I'm sorry to use this example. But what's the, what's the Nigerian bank care, you know, in the real sense of the word, about fossil uh, fuel emissions, you know, uh, greenhouse gases. I would have said, what does Tony Lumelu care about it? But I think he cares because he tries to do a lot of good PR. So I'll leave him out. But what, what do the banks care about in Nigeria? Care about this? When you see an industry which whose revenue rose by 32.7% um, in 2022, in the nine months leading to September, compared to the corresponding period in the preceding year, all right, and it's it's growing. It's making a lot of money, and we're not even hitting the potentials in terms of the quota for Nigeria. All right, even to supply gas to parts of Europe, we can't even meet it up. So, do the Nigerian banks? Okay, let's leave out the the, the global institutions. The Nigerian banks really care that much right now at this point. Are they really that involved in this this shift towards um, let's call it ethical funding? I, I think as a, as a country, I mean, the Nigerian banks are a subset of the country as a whole. The, the real question as a country is that are we particularly conscious or, or do we have a strong movement um, towards anti fossil fuel? And should we? My answer would be no. I don't think we have a strong uh, a movement against uh, for fuel. And the reason is simple. We are strongly for fuel dependent as a country. 30 years ago, Nigeria's foreign exchange earnings is over 90% from crude oil. Today, 30 years after, 90%, over 90% is still from crude oil. So should we be getting excited about um, um, uh, uh, going out of fossil fuel? Uh, I, I, I don't think we should be getting excited about it. Rather, what Nigeria and Nigerian institutions should be looking at is how to be able to negotiate its way um, a, 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 a against a force that will impose very short as a country. What is, the, what is the global world putting on the table for a, a country like Nigeria if you say that the source of, our 19, of, of over 90% of our effects should go away? What is in it for us? You know, so uh, for me, Nigeria banks are doing their best as far as financial industry is concerned. They will probably do continue to do that. But let's realize that there are limits to those funding, especially when uncertainty start to, to uh, 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 get in the space. Mm -hmm. People will pull back on how, how bullish they tend to get about funding that particular industry. And Nigeria, Nigeria banks will do exactly that. We'll play exactly that same way. Hmm. All right. Um, so you're saying basically that right now, uh, where we are, at, we're not ready in terms of uh, um, the corporate sector, especially the banking um, majors, to to jump on this global train in the way that the other companies are doing everything they can. I mean, I see adverts from Total and Shell, you know, talking about the environment. It's it's a departure from what we used to see before. Um, on, on, on CNN, you see them talking about clean, you know, you see some windmills and you're wondering, is this, is this shell? Or but you're saying that the Nigerian banks are not ready yet because of where we are as a developing country. It kind of reminds me of um, uh, the example that uh, one of the presidential candidates gave when he said uh, that uh, he was asked about, you know, you know uh, the environment and um, uh, carbon issues, you know, carbon neutrality and all that. And he said, well, uh, the West should be able to fund it if they want Africans and Nigerians to be involved. That you can see a church rat staring at uh, uh, poison communions. He used that example, which I'm sorry to use right now. And you can't tell it not to eat that that poison communion. It will go and eat it because it's hungry, you know. So um, yeah, I don't know if you agree with that. In, I want you to talk about that in light of the fact that the vice president of Nigeria went globe trotting some time ago. 
Uh, he, he particularly went to the United States of America to see Kamala Harris and to talk about uh, how to, you know, develop and, you know, build on Nigeria's energy transition plan. I mean, it's a big deal. They have a website for it. Trust them, Shibajo. They will have everything in place. They have a big a, a website for it. It's uh, Nigeria trying to achieve, uh, they say, carbon neutrality by 2060. You know, is are we really do we have the will to, to do this, or is this just something we are doing just to make sure that we are going along with the world with COP, uh, with, the, with the COP and all that? We don't even have an option. That is the reality. If we don't begin to take steps and make those transition plans and negotiate our transition plan with the international or with the global community, then we're going to be caught. So we're going to be knocked out of the of the system. We will be caught in the lurch. So, we must continue along the line of that energy transition that the Vice President has been pursuing. In fact, after this government is gone, if it is possible to, to, to have him continue the campaign, it would be a nice idea. We can get some other people with the same level of passion who can, be, who can continue that pace. We must negotiate our way through the transition. Otherwise, the global world has used this same fossil fuel to develop their economies. And they are now trying to pull it down all of a sudden, remove it totally, and leave, leave a country like Nigeria in, in abject poverty. What will happen to us if the source of over 90% of our efforts disappears overnight? The other part, however, is also that Nigeria as a country must begin to work on the life after fossil fuel. So there must be clear transition, the clear steps we're going to take, and now we will manage our way out of the dependence on fossil fuel as the source of over 90% of our foreign exchange. We must begin that work. And the time to begin that work is actually now. So while we are negotiating with the global uh, community on, on one side, we are also preparing for life after fossil fuel on the other side. Issues of renewable energy, they must be able to see our commitment to renewable energy as well. So building a portfolio of renewable energy must be in that mix. It's part of what we go to the negotiation tables with and say, look, this is the effort we are making in the renewable energy space. But however, allow us to transit according to this particular plan that we have for moving away from fossil fuel. So we cannot all be on the same page, not that we will uh, just concede and, and, and leave over 90 percent of our foreign debt in there it, it, it will be absolute impoverishment for us as a country it will be madness some will say <laughs> to do that um, <laughs> but what you're saying is that uh, there is no shaking for nigeria's oil and gas industry there are always going to be alternative sources of funds uh because there's money to be made i guess that's the thesis of what you're saying um uh, it's, it's a lot of work though it's a lot of work because we're talking about the alternative uh, funding are not readily here as we speak mm. so it has to be developed it has to now grow to be able to meet that need that mm. we're talking about so, say, seeing that this is a lot of work will this slow down the development in the oil and gas industry uh, in nigeria looking at uh, the huge profits it made this year or last year sorry 2022 will this slow down um if, if this this becomes a reality in 2023 i i think some other financing institutions are stepping into in that space um Afrexim, uh, AFDB, and there are there are major uh, discussions at those levels to even ask Africans, mm. what are we doing putting all our sovereign wealth, African sovereign wealth, are sitting in Europe and America? And these same Europe and American banks are the ones who are saying they will stop financing your own uh, uh, institutions here in Africa. Mm. So we must begin to also ask ourselves some of those questions. Do Why can Africa do much more in terms of providing funding for its own need within Africa, rather than having all this sovereign wealth from sitting in Europe and America. All right. Uh, so, it, it's progressive. Okay, with just a final one. Um, the federal government is saying fuel importation will end by 2024. I guess a lot of people forgot about the uh, renovation of the refineries, especially that of Port Harcourt, and we are hearing that it will start producing 60,000 barrels per day in, in the f first quarter of this year, according to Timmy Press Silva. Do you foresee that happening? I, I think it will happen. Right. Um, the contract that were awarded for three refineries, uh, one of them should be about completed as we speak. 
I'm sorry, a couple of other ones to be completed later in the, in, the, in the course of the year. They will produce, and then the primary refinery is also one thing that I look forward to. At those levels, we now begin to be exporters of fuel, even if it is just within Africa. Right. That will be an additional source of foreign exchange earning for Nigeria. Okay. We begin to be a producer of value-add products and not just an exporter of commodities. All right, Bola Olegiri, all and gas analysts, thank you very much for your time. Look forward to having you again on the program. My pleasure is mine. Thanks for having me. All right. Still ahead, we'll look at the uh, C I'll to look at more on the CBN withdrawal limits, which uh, uh, began yesterday. Implementation began yesterday uh, amid concerns over the new narrow note and scarcity of that new narrow note. For now, I'll just try and fold this one properly into my pocket and we'll be right back. Please stay with us.